I don't want to read someone else's script. The boss needs to stick to forging memos. Look at this garbage. It doesn't even start with settle in class. Great, now someone's co- uh, not a someone's- Amelia, start the episode. Oh, uh, um, okay. Guck. I'm on it, boss. Hi, everyone. We're doing tests for a new type of series on monsters and encounter building. While we get that ready, today we'll be focused on location and environment. Not just dungeons, a place not meant for combat can be just as interesting and dangerous. You'll see a few examples of that today, and how to keep basic monsters interesting through encounter location and design. We'll be starting with a warm-up of incoming skeletons! Specifically Necrophidius and Skeletal Champions. The Necrophidius halting melee combatants while the Skeletal Champions pound the back line. These ones with acid-resistant alchemical lacquer because we know who they're fighting. Ambushes are typically done to creatures as they travel, but you can set them up anywhere. If you know where a party's staying, creatures like Constructs and Undead are especially good. Just hide them somewhere in a room with an order to stay motionless until the backup arrives. I was hiding! <laughs> this is the most basic basic use of environment, outside of how creatures fit into it to begin with. If they're suited to the environment, like goblins in the Warren, you can expect the rooms to be made for those creatures, while a hag in a hospital or a duck in a dungeon will just leave them wondering how they got there to begin with. Now that's not a bad thing, the goblins not meshing well with giant's abandoned home might be the point, and a little acknowledgement like extra stairs or ladders might wave away their questions about how all this works, but be aware that they might ask questions or just jump to conclusions. Bar the door, set the traps, the battle stations, people, the schools- Empty. What? It's in the script, they've emptied out the floor and let the monsters loose. It says it was your idea. What are you- Wait. I said we should build a fake dungeon with movable walls to give hands-on experience, and we could film during downtime. Not that we should clear out the classrooms and release the f***ing undead! Maybe it was a misunderstanding? Don't misunderstand her body plan when I get my hands on that Of course, the mission is to not let the beasties tear up the school, specifically eradicating straightforward undead so we can focus on design instead. Out the door, down the hall, and that is not an undead. That is a living graffiti harassing cleaning automatons. Cleaning automatons who've decided their potential culprits, and graffiti that now has much more amusing victims. The party getting caught in a three-way war can change up the pace and give some storytelling. Let's you make things a bit stronger than usual as the enemies can fight each other, but make sure you give a reason the party can't just run and wait him out. Those classic mecha dungeons were masters of this. Instead of fighting, you might negotiate a truce with one of the sides to help clear another floor. Maybe they were dropped into the fight, or a third set of creatures saw the fight and decided to join in. If your goal is to capture a creature or take something from it, have it try to lose the party in a crowd or wake up a monster as it runs by. The people are part of the environment as well. Add variety. The kobolds might have trained animals and allied elementals, a draconic master, and autonomous inventions. You can always slip in some that are out of place, but if you don't want to do that, try reflavoring. The Necrophidius from the last encounter is actually a perfect example. That bone snake isn't actually undead. It's actually a construct, just covered in bones for the aesthetic and sometimes a boost in processing power. You could have made this out of iron and nobody would have questioned it, but they threw in a bit of undead flavor and gave the necromancers variety. Well, that and a bludgeoning weakness due to the material. Little adaptations like that can really step up your reflavoring game. Goblins might fit, but throw on a climb speed and they're great for your spider layer. The animated silverware swarm becomes cleaning supplies by swapping the slashing for acid damage. Change that fiddle and bone straights out and you get a minor devil with a fiddle of gold against your soul because he thinks he's better than you. Just remember that adding too much can mess with the difficulty. I don't think that's phase the party though. This is not the layout. Why do the wall patterns keep changing? Where are we? <laughs> Let's keep moving boss. Sign the exit and hit the bricks. On the right we have a basic setup in a lab. A pair of zombie brutes are wandering, one chopping at a table with a pile of parts, and another stirring a nearly empty cauldron. Basic encounter until someone sees the party. The pile comes to life as a skittering swarm of discarded limbs, and a grotesque mat of burnt guts rises from the cauldron. A basic ambush, but integrated into the environment. The backup could have been under the tables or coming in from another room, and nothing would have functionally changed. But having this be a lab or a kitchen, with a fight unknowingly being made in front of them, makes this ambush even better. And even without the ambush, having people interact with their environment when not on alert makes your encounters come to life. Even the zombies aren't just doing nothing until the party arrives. And with other types of monsters, they might have learned something by sneaking in and listening. Invaders mocking or admiring the architecture, factory minions singing little work songs, or realizing a clockwork creation is so hair-triggered that even bugs can put it into attack mode. Using the environment isn't just about how you can beat the party to death with it. Anyway, talk about economical. Efficiency is one of our biggest advantages. Oh great, so we're smashing someone's extra credit now. Probably failures actually. It's pretty textbook for economy raising. Oh, I'll show you economical. Hey boss, what are you doing? Squirming swill are the runoff and burnt bits from badly cleaned cauldrons. The alchemy students probably make these things weekly. However, they've usually got some leftover potion if you know where to apply. Interesting. Yes. Afterward, they find an alarmingly similar room. Different in flavor, of course, in our case a study hall instead of a potion lab. You might make this a treasure room instead of a bunk room, or a lounge over a meeting room. Whatever fits your 
setting. The trick is to make sure it looks mostly the same. Like you just copied the room and changed one thing to pad for time. They're in for a rude awakening. Partially because these zombies are controlled by animated skin. Shred skin, boneless, whatever you want to call them. You can even have them completely fall apart. Head bursting into a flaming skull and guts into undead serpents and their blood into an ooze. Make the mid-level party spear the humble zombie again. Secondly, because using the environment is still about how you can beat the party to death with it. Even if it's not meant for combat or they aren't supposed to be there, how does this environment fit the monster's needs? Invaders broke the place to bits so your rogue has nowhere to hide. Or defenders turn break room tables into barricades. If they can climb, give them plenty of elevation changes. If they're small, give them places to dart through to outmaneuver and run. It's easy to have a dungeon be built for defense, but overturned market stalls are just as difficult of terrain as fallen logs. They're spilled tomatoes slippery as ball bearings. And of course, we can't forget actual traps. I could give examples all day long, but a better question is what you can do to make them unique to the area. It's not an exploding ward, it's a cook throwing a torch at a nearby sack of flour. Monsters try to push the players into a garbage pit or machinery. A goblin swinging log is a kobold scythe trap is a falling chandelier. Even things that aren't meant to be traps can be one. A catapult is a siege weapon unless you hide it under the floor tiles and have it spring if someone steps on it. Bonus points if they're indoors. And if you're feeling fancy, integrate them with a monster's abilities. I don't mean things like a ghost and arrow traps or flying creatures with floor spikes. That's just a monster avoiding the trap. I like things that actively work in tandem. You can easily avoid the boulder trap, which is why there's giant spiders. Minotaur aren't immune to pit traps, but they can improve their chance of working by charging you in. This also lets the party turn the trap against them. Incredibly satisfying. Not that our party will get a chance, they seem to be wearing down. Vivi, I'm out of spells. Me too, at least usable ones. Wasn't planning on war today, didn't bring anything potent. I guess that's one way to make them threatening. I got watch, boss. Thank you. So you yeah, still think these are free roaming failures? No, shred skins aren't part of the curriculum. Might be brought here and controlled by someone. Plenty of spells to force control for a bit. Couldn't have been the boss, you don't like necromancy. Does it even matter? Yeah, because we might run into the summoner and I don't want to kill a student. Anyway. Here's another point of contention. Resting. Do you let them and when? To me, encounters while resting are the same as encounters while traveling. They should serve a purpose. If you attack a party mid-rest, they're just gonna keep trying. Especially in Pathfinder, where you typically take a few minutes between encounters to prevent a death spiral. However, this does not mean attacking mid-rest is a waste of time. If it's the evening long rest, it can show them local dangers. Leaving them unarmored and out of position is good for the occasional mix-up. For a short rest, it can force them to press on or retreat, or at least fortify their position. At times like this, the undead might just rise back up as skeletons. <laughs> Teach them a regional effect to the main monster, or have that monster pop in and do something. A good compromise is giving the next encounter time to wander by. If they're spotted, they might turn the next encounter into an ambush, or make a few traps or barricades, or sound the alarm. Give them a chance to prevent this, of course, unless you have good reason. Hiding the campsite should give them at least a chance to get away with it, but try to make the rest an actual decision. And if you plan on giving them a rest point, not a bad idea, think about where you're putting it. Not just physically, by like bringing them into an area they can hole up in. I mean, we're in the day's list of encounters. I know it's cliche, but this one comes right before the biggest boss at the end. Or rather, the biggest boss comes right after it. We got that vulture thing incoming! Reusing this room again? Pathetic. Not. Wait. This brings us to modifying your environment mid-encounter. Now if you use this too much, your players might want to start using the terrain themselves, which is a good thing, but one to prepare for. As the Karen Golem smashes down the door, it reveals a little secret about this area. Perforated flooring with a magical charge to crack it further, dropping them down to the room below. You could also just use a monster big enough to break it, but budget. If your location allows it, trap doors are great for cutting off light in your tree, which is its own hazard. I've even seen them connect to underground fighting rings. But structural damage can be done to near any location and makes difficult terrain from the ruins. But dynamic scene change, the one to use sparingly. Now we think about this new environment. You can have it prepared with traps like previous rooms, but now they're in the middle of the action. They might even purposely activate a trap to their advantage. We'll go with the classic, however. Reinforcements waiting below. Oh, ho, ho, you stand before the mighty. No, I'm done with this. Gentle repose. <laughs> Carrion Golem, a nightmare up close but immobilized by gentle repose and vulnerable to fire. Don't make us burn the school body gatherer. Never as always, but I have a whole troop of shamblers awaiting my call. Try it, buddy. I dare ya. Wait, didn't you just say you didn't want to kill a student? Didn't want to work today either. Wait, I recognize that voice. Didn't we have fundamental hemomancy together? Barry, right? Come on, it's been a really long day. Please let us go. But I prepared all these evil speeches. And you're looking at some grade A minions. I'll grab some drinks and you can try them out. Let's see what you got. <laughs> And sometimes they will come up with creative solutions. I know people who've used explosives to cave in the roof, smash through a ceiling on a flaming bed and ran, power combo spells and wild shape to smash the dungeon with its own tower. I've seen minion uprisings, people sneaking past, even using disguises to bamboozle the boss. They might try to leave and go get help, or use the power of friendship on the boss themselves, or whatever that counted as. As long as it's not the same way every time, the players might find it more satisfying than a fight. You can also intentionally subvert the boss, where it turns out the evil ruler is actually quite nice and just had no idea what was going on. Or maybe they're just 
just a figurehead and were actually a prisoner themselves. So that option does tend to end with them either dead or forcibly adopted by the party. Because remember, it's not kidnapping when the good guys are doing it to someone they find interesting. Anyway, my disguise self is wearing off. And just in time, too. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, I've never been in the Archmage's office. Head Mage. That glorified admin doesn't have the qualifications for Archmage. This camera's rolling. What? Oh, and prompt cards, too. Wonderful. Well, I hope you enjoyed our thrilling adventure. Warmest thanks to- Oh, don't bring Barrel Goblin and Modern Masquerade's good names into this mockery of an episode. But yes, copy link below to help the show like those wonderful people. Next time, I'll be at the helm showing you a real encounter. But in the meantime, class dismissed. Everyone out of the room. I don't like the sound of that. Hey, Guck, you don't see her anywhere, right? No sign of the boss, boss. Because any wizard worth her bug would have already warped out. And besides, we need to make sure that evil necromancer hasn't left her an ambush. I'm leaving. What about invisibility? You just recorded every spell I cast. I can't see the invisible. Unless you're saying that her boss is so stupid she would order an extermination then hide invisible in the blast zone. <laughs> exactly. Rain of frogs! No!